Hey guys, what's going on? It is Stroz here, and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be going over why I don't like Keynote or Toten. I know you've seen the title of this video, and I know you clicked on it ready to dislike it, but watch the entire video and then give me a chance to explain myself, because I know it's an unpopular opinion, but that's just my opinion on it. I know this video will receive some hate because Kino or Toten is thought of by many as one of the best zombies maps to ever exist. I'm here to say that I don't agree with this thought, and I would go as far to say that Kino or Toten is actually one of the worst that they've ever made um, in Black Ops 1, and that's just a yikes for me to be completely honest. So let's start with a little bit of a backstory. Like many other prominent people, Kino or Toten was the first zombies map that I ever played on. Black Ops 1 was my first COD game even though I purchased it during the life cycle of Modern Warfare 3. I, being new to COD, didn't purchase any of the DLCs or anything of that nature, so I had three Zombies maps on disc for BO1, one of which being Dead Ops Arcade, which I didn't like very much. I had to choose between two of the maps, 5 and Keynote Toten. Back in the day, Keynote Toten was my go-to map, and even though I couldn't get past round 15 on it, it was still a really enjoyable experience. As for 5, it was just too hard for me when I was starting out, and I never could even get past like the Pentagon Thief round on that map, so that's why I like Kino more. With all that said, let's just say that a new game came out called Call of Duty Black Ops 2. This is my second favorite COD game that ever they ever created, and it's behind only the nostalgic feels of my first game ever, Black Ops 1. I really enjoy the multiplayer and campaigns of this game. The zombies, even though Transit wasn't very good, the DLCs were pretty good. So many of you may be asking, why am I talking about Black Ops 2 in the Keynote or Toten video? Here's why. Once Black Ops 2 came out and Black Ops 2 Zombies was into its life cycle, I could already tell that Keynote or Toten was not a very good map. Think about Transit versus Keynote or Toten. Even though I'd have to agree that Kino is better than Transit in almost every single way, Transit made a ton of innovations to the basic Zombies mode from BO1. Buildables were actually a huge thing in that map, the map was a ton bigger to the point where I still don't even know where the hell I'm going half the time, and it was great with multiple friends. Solo transit kind of sucks, but with multiple friends it can actually be a kind of enjoyable experience. To be completely honest, even though everyone always shits on transit for being a bad map, that may be because yes, things were so bad like, uh, like the fog and the denizens, because fuck those guys, but anyway, the map was uh, pretty hard as well. So. As I started to still grow into zombies, I soon realized that Keener to Toten was a walk in the park, and here's why. Here's how you get to high rounds on Keener to Toten. Get a thunder gun, get jug, train on the stage. Training on the stage was the easiest thing to do for inexperienced players, and that's why I enjoyed Kino so much when I was new to zombies. Eventually, the fire trap pit strat would soon become a thing, and what you're seeing in the gameplay right now is actually the strat. It's so, so easy. You hoard up zombies in the room with the trap, shoot a thunder gun shot. Create another horde, take them to the electro trap by the stage, jump back through the electro trap, get another horde, and use the fire pit on them. It's super easy. The only way you can even die in this strategy is by not paying attention. You have one of the best wonder weapons to ever exist, and if you get into a bad situation, you can just use it. It'll get you out of any bad situation that you could ever exist in. Now let's get into Kino's normal gameplay. Kino and Toten on launch for BO1 had only four original perks. Eventually they would add Mule Kick in with Moon's DLC, which was the last DLC. So the four original perks were Jug, Speed Cola, Quick Revive, and Double Tap 1.0. It had a new wonder weapon in the Thunder Gun and featured a teleporter that took you to the Pack-a-Punch. Besides these few features, there wasn't a lot to this map. Also, Keanu and Toten had Nova Crawlers! Those little shits were so annoying! They were so annoying to deal with! Plus, they were pretty much the ancestors of the spiders from Zetsubo and Revelations! I hate those guys, they're so annoying! Anyway, let me let me get back on track. Keanu and Toten was a very boring and planned map. There wasn't a lot to do on it, and for new Zombies players it was fun. Zombies was originally just a game mode where you could just sit down, enjoy, and play casually, and have a good time. Keanu and Toten was pretty much the quintessential map for this type of gameplay and I can see why people love this map for that. However, there is no chance that a map like this could even come close to being as good as Origins, Mob of the Dead, or Dreisendrak. It's just too bland or boring. I couldn't even see this map being top 10 for what it features. <sighs> In essence, a lot of people just like this map for the nostalgia as well. This map was the, supposed to be the fourth DLC for World at War, and I can see why. It feels more like a World at War map than anything else. This map has no reason being in the game like BO1, which featured uh, time, the time period around the Cold War and Vietnam 
with Russia, the US, and the Vietnamese. Let's look at other maps in BO1. 5 is a map that deals with the Cuban Missile Crisis and has many star cast members from that time period such as JFK, Fidel Castro, uh, McNamara, and Richard Nixon, I believe is the other guy, I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, um, it deals with the Cuban Missile Crisis and it has one of the most badass crews to ever exist, even though the Wep Wonder Weapon sucks, but that's that's just the Wonder Weapon. Anyway, moving on to Ascension, that's another map that deals with the Soviets. The Soviets, um, it, it's linked to five through the through the radios, not really the radios, but the phones on that map. You can hear them ringing, and then it'll say quotes from five, which is pretty cool. Call of the Dead takes place in Siberia, and it, although it takes place in 21st century, the map still feels like it's tied to that Cold War feel. Moon also deals with the Cold War and the space race that occurred between a ton of different countries. As for Shangri-La, that is the only map that hasn't been influenced by the Cold War in BO1. But that map has not been influenced by Nazi Germany either, like Kiener der Toten is, which is why it's really unique. That's why Kiener, or that's why Shangri-La, rather, is one of the greatest zombies maps that ever exists, in my opinion, because it's just so unique. So gameplay-wise, Kiener der Toten is obviously not one of my favorites because of how boring and easy it is, and also because it, it is not supposed to be a part of Black Ops 1. It's more of a World at War kind of feeling map. Let's talk about the storyline. In case you weren't aware, I'm a huge fan of the Agartha storyline that Craig Houston and his team have come up with, and the storyline isn't really good for Kino de Toten. At this point, there obviously wasn't very much to go off of since World at War wasn't really big for its storyline, however, let's just go into the storyline a little bit. Kino de Toten was the first place that Ultimus ever traveled to, Ultimus being Riktoff and Nikolai Dempsey and Takeo, the first, the first versions of them, not the BO3 versions. Um, but they, this was the first place that they ever traveled from the, from the Reese. They traveled from the Reese, and due to temporal rifts that occurred, zombies were occupying the abandoned theater. As for what they are doing there for, th there's nothing really that they do in Kino de Toten. They just kind of fight zombies, and then they leave on a lunar lander for some reason. I don't really know why a lunar lander is at Kino, but anyway, they travel, um, on a lunar lander, to Ascension and they fight zombies at Ascension. This storytelling is boring. It is boring. There isn't much to it and it's just very, very just boring. I'm not very intrigued by it at all. It's kind of just a one-dimensional story. There's not really much going on here and that's why I'm not a huge fan of the storyline of this map. To sum up my arguments, Keanu Houghton doesn't belong in conversations with the best zombies maps. Like I said, the Rise and Drac Origins, Mob of the Dead, this map does not compare to those great maps. This map is very boring, and it's very easy. Getting to a high round is so damn easy that anyone could probably do it. Secondly, the gameplay doesn't feel very different from its predecessors in World at War. Third, the map didn't help um, being in BO1. BO1 doesn't really fit, or Kino de Toten doesn't really fit in BO1's kind of style that it has going for it. Um, it doesn't fit into that Cold War era feeling. Lastly, the storyline of the map is just so bland, boring, and one-dimensional that there isn't really much there to it, and that's why I don't like Kino de Toten, and I think it's the most overrated zombies map that has ever existed. It's so, so overrated. If you have a differing opinion, please feel free to leave it in the comments section down below. I will be reading through all of the comments that you guys leave, and I know a bunch of you guys are not going to agree with this video, especially Mr. Tyrone Lee. A bunch of you guys aren't going to agree with this video, and I can 100% understand your opinions on it. I mean, it's a pretty, like, chilled out, casual kind of map, and that's why I don't like it, and also all the storyline and everything it does, doesn't really fit in Black Ops 1. But, um, anyway guys, if you enjoy the video, then please leave a like on it, and subscribe for more videos from me coming out in the next few days. I upload Rainbow Six Siege videos, Call of Duty Zombies videos, and eventually I'm going to be uploading Battlefield 5 videos. So... It should, be, it should be a lot of fun. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, uh, please leave a like on it and subscribe. That would be very much appreciated. And until the next one, guys, take it easy and peace out.